Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to call the, <coughs> yeah, the meeting of the Bay City Commission of Ways and Means Committee to order. Uh, it's four o'clock on February fifth, two thousand nineteen. So please take the roll. Eric. Here. Lutz. Here. Rieger. Yes, sir. Here. Here. Ryder. Here. Ransom. Here. Present. Thank you. Uh, next up is the minutes from uh, one two nineteen. Support. Support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is public input. Anybody from the public would like to come and speak before the board, uh, commit this committee, uh, please do so now. And please state, please state your name, sir. Richard Spencer, 1427 Park Avenue, also property owner of 22 West Hampton Road, so I am in the county along with the city. I've had the opportunity to go to these bridge meetings of the Independence and the Liberty Bridge, and I think I missed one meeting because I was sick at the Doubletree. It was the only one I've missed. And here about a month ago, I went to the city meeting, and after the meeting there was some conversation, and I got a little case of the hot under the collar I was left to the impression that the county had washed their hands of helping the city, and so I had to call Mr. Barsha and kind of ream his backside, and he said, now wait a minute. This isn't how it's being. It's not, the county hasn't washed their hands of it. And I, he proceeded to explain to me about it, and then he introduced me to a lady that I, I don't know her name, but I call her Marty's replacement, Marty Fitzhugh's replacement. <laughs> and I had a conversation with that lady, and she told me some things that uh, had a completely different outlook on the bridges. So I had to go last night, and I had to go to him, and I had to tell him that uh, when I left here the last time, the impression was the county had washed their hands of it, and that isn't how it is. I told them last night, I said, I, I don't believe it how it is. And my personal opinion is they can't do anything, because uh, it's not, the county can't do anything, this is my assumption. The county can't do anything because it's not yours. But if you're asked, you can help. That's how I see things. and. With that lady right there, if they ask her, she's going to tell them what they need to do. And I told them last night, personally, I don't think you've even started yet to get, get the help that is out there. And that's when I said I personally feel as if, can't tell you what to do, but you ought to send the county a letter, document you're asking for help. Now, if they ask for help and you don't help them, I'm going to have to tell you my honest opinion. Shame on you. Because every one of us have used that bridge for the last 40 years at least. And I'm, I, I, was, I was really hot under the collar a couple of times. And I had to have old Jim there cool me off. He didn't throw pale water on me, but he, he had the right, uh, and he wasn't putting on a knack because he got the lady in. All I ask is if they come and ask for help, that the county commission, and I understand everybody's on a tight budget, and there's gonna be a lot of people complain if they even mention the county coming up with some money. But I personally think we need to push the state hard, hard, hard. And you got seven commissioners or eight commissioners on the city board, or I don't know how many, I think <clears throat> nine, or I don't know. And you got the mayor and you got uh, supposedly a state rep someplace and uh, <laughs> governor and if we have all you people going too I've always learned there's more done with more people I personally hope that you all take a severe look at it and we might have a little attitude about you know well I don't, I don't shop in Bay City don't mean shit me excuse my language but don't mean nothing to me, but that ain't the attitude to take. 
It'd be like the guys in Saginaw when that policeman got shot say, well, oh, he's gonna get his bills paid, you know? So what, you know? No, that ain't how you look at things. You look at things in an open mind and in an open heart and try and help those that you can help because we'd all be in trouble if you're over to <coughs> Saginaw Bay Estates and you had a heart attack, you want that ambulance coming all the way around? I don't think you do. You want me? <laughs> you can you shortcut? So I appreciate your time. I hope you take a severe look at it. I think you will, because there's some reason that the county's got some information that they, the city needs to get out of them from that lady there, because she, she had the answers. When I, she had more than the answers for me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to come forward? <coughs> Seeing no one. We'll move on to petitions and communications, and uh, <coughs> we're going to kind of do this a little, not backwards, but a little different. Uh, from the probate court, the youth and family counselor position, we've had a lot of discussion on this uh, coming forward in paperwork for the commission, and I, uh, what I'd like to do is have people from the court come in no. and, and give us their take on what's going on, and then Tiffany will have a weigh in on it, and then we'll see if we want to make a motion to bring this to full board. So go ahead and give us a rundown of what's going on here. Thank you. Uh, first up, I want to introduce Just Brittany Malastic. Um, Brittany's been with us in the probate court for several years, uh, but what, last late last summer, uh, accepted the deputy court administrator position with us. So I don't know if you've all met Brittany, but so Brittany's here today. Uh, we'll try to answer all your questions. I think Brittany's going to start. Sure. All right. You want to start with questions or do you want me to go ahead do you must have why don't you give a little background on what's go, what, what's happened and what and where okay. we're at um our previous youth and family counselor was with us for 16 years over the course of 16 years she gained her master's degree and several of the certifications that are required for the youth and family counselor position to support our juveniles and families in the probate and juvenile court uh, last november she accepted a position in sanilac county community mental health both for the ability to um, step up the ladder a little bit, but also to engage in some of the aspects of her work that she's most passionate about. We have done two sets of interviews. We started internally, we moved on to external interviews, and we are just not capturing the type of candidates that are required for the community and for the population of youth that we're now serving in the probate and juvenile court. So that brings us to you today. Uh, we've done some research in looking at community organizations, their pay structure, um, equivalency in both education as well as what their positions look like. Um, and we're only asking that we make ourselves competitive. We're not asking to step above what the other community organizations are offering. Just bring the wage up enough that we can pull in applicants from some of the larger cities and universities, make ourselves competitive, get a good candidate, and then service the youth and family um, more appropriately. Remember, part of this is a position that's funded under the child care fund, so the cost is really half to the county, correct? Correct. Because that's the fund where we split the cost with the state. So we're asking for about a $6,000 roughly, so it's about 3000 to the county. The other factor, Brittany, talk a little bit about the, um, like the youth that we've had that if we don't have this position mm -hmm. um, and um, we get a placement, sure. there's some huge cost, significant, that Kara was doing before in-house. And if we have any of those come in, we've lost, I mean, Pennywise pound for which, but go ahead. Sure, so it gets complicated with private insurance, Medicaid, and that is kind of where Kara's position came in. And if I use Kara, it's easier than just saying youth and family counselor 10 times. Um, so Kara was the catch-all. She allowed us to service families and juveniles who fell in between private insurance and Medicaid. We had a young man last year, and I was asked on several occasions to provide large quantities of cases, but we don't work in large quantities of cases. We will work in large quantities of money for one case. So we had a young man last year that was, per a plea agreement, ordered to 26 sessions with Kara that kept him out of institutionalized placement within the state. That's not our juvenile home. That is an institution outside of our county. $291 a day. Um, he would have been ordered at minimum seven months to be in this placement. In 
lieu of that, Kara offered intensive counseling in-house. Cost us nothing. She was already trained in the specialized counseling. He completed successfully, was discharged this week from probation. He will not reoffend. He was a young man that we were lucky enough to grab onto early, give him the intensive services he needed, and it only shows that this position is a benefit to our court. So although it's only one case, it's $30,000 that her position saved the county in placement that we wouldn't have budgeted for because we wouldn't have realized that this specific gentleman was going to commit the crime he did. Commissioner Krieger. So the position you're trying to fill. Yes. The pool is, is you're not getting anything out of the pool. So if we raise the bar up. Yes. As far as the pay and we bring another individual in, I'm assuming it would have the same skills and abilities as Kara to be able to do the exact same thing should we have another juvenile that needs the special service instead of sending them out of district and having to pay the cost ourselves. Correct, and a lot of the applicants that we want to bring in, uh, Michigan State is a great school for um, a lot of the applicants that we've been seeing. They, their program has expanded significantly over the last several years, so they're offering Cert, certi sorry, certificates within their master's program that allow us to treat for substance abuse. It allows us a lot of other intensive programming that we wouldn't have had in the past that would be of no cost to us. It's, it's requirements built into their education now. So we are looking at bringing in people who could offer services beyond what we have now that we could bring back in house and not continue to give to external organizations as well. My other question is, besides the, the $6,000 step, which you say that the county would be responsible for $3,000, I'm assuming that uh, these applicants that we're going after look at the, the benefit package that Bay County has to offer, because I would think that um, other areas that they may be looking at may be falling a little short from what Bay County has to offer for an individual to work here. So and That is correct. Um, both times that we submitted this for um, applicants to apply, both of the individuals that were the highest, highly, the most highly qualified of the pool of applicants that we received turned us down because of pay. They took a position with, whether it was, a, was community mental health or another court facility, due to the rate of pay so in the first round pretty sorry we, we had a candidate we were ready to offer and she took another position so we talked with bob and tiffany and we went back out for exactly that reason hoping to really uh, promote the fact that we have these benefits we got really close we had a candidate who had all the juvenile experience we were looking for we were really happy with it we um Brittany was setting up an appointment for her to come in and meet with judge minor so we could make the offer to her but for at least have uh, a look see at her and then make the offer she called back like the day the next day and said i accepted another position to pay more money so we tried that and that's why we now decided to come here and just say if we keep doing this that's kind of the, the path we're down when we're in a tough spot and we understand that you have the wage study and all that stuff um, but in this case what we looked at locally even i, I think the wage study would um, show that we are not even in the ballpark with them and that is important to people and our benefits are wonderful or you're absolutely right mm -hmm. but um it does come down lots of times to pay sure commissioner lutz thank you so what have we been doing in, in the meantime since the absence of care outsourcing our services and is that costing more money yes um on a on a smaller scale just because like i said the example that i gave you is once a year but it far outweighs the $500 a month that we may pay out to an organization for temporary services until this is filled. You know, you're looking at 30,000 for the whole year as opposed to 500 a month, but it's still 500 a month that we not, may not have asked for at the beginning of the budget year because we look to CARA to service at least 20 of our most intensive cases every year at a time. That's not for the whole year. That's at one, any one time she has 20 of our most intensive cases. And unfortunately, we have no way of knowing if somebody new DHHS, you know, identifies an individual and then in that category that would be those multi-hundred dollar per day placements. That could happen and we wouldn't have, 
in essence, Kara's position to step up and do that right now. We'd have no choice but to put them in that. So, uh, and those are, we don't control that. We don't, we might not get anybody this year, we could get three people this year, we have no idea. Commissioner Durantia. I have <coughs> just a question. Do you have the $3,000 in your current budget to make the step up? No, not to accommodate the additional services that our, our kids are going to require in the future. Um, part of what we submitted was showing that the money that we need to bring in further to supplement the pay scale increase we're asking for wouldn't take, take effect until the fourth year. So right now, it, the starting pay kind of falls in the pay, falls in what the pay scale already looks like. So you're not going to have to contribute any additional money until year four. And it's a small increase for the last two years to balance with what the child care fund will reimburse us for increasing the position. Does that make sense? I guess I'm getting a yes, but maybe a no. It's because care is at the top of the wage scale and the new hire would start at the first level. So the difference between that yeah. pay is the savings we would have in the first two or three years where we take those steps and not until she gets up to year four will it start um, increasing their budget at that point. So it's this <coughs> wage scale. All set. Commissioner Durancic, you all set? Yes, I am. Uh, Commissioner Kuna. So had the previous employee always provided <coughs> that type of counseling in the past? Yes. Once she got the certification. <coughs> yes. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. It's not like they did some and we outsource some others. They're always, is that within their job description that that's what they're gonna do? Correct, we have had cases where we had a young man um, came into the court system in 2013. He offended, offended, offended. Intensive counseling was given until the last seven months of him being an adult. Once he, so there were seven months between being institutionalized and him turning 18 and it was kind of the it, it was the last option we just he he became older he became more um, his mental illness became more severe it just at that point we weren't able to treat him in-house anymore and he had to go on for more extensive services so again it's a one in however many you know it's it's undeterminable the job description doesn't change just the pay I'm sorry? The job description does not change just the pay, is what you're asking. Correct. So this new person, whoever takes that job, will be part of their job is to do this type of counseling, therefore reducing the cost of sending somebody <coughs> to uh, some place where it's quite expensive. Right. And yes. we can't find anybody, correct? Correct. Well, the few individuals we've been able to say we would hire have left because of the well, I mean, they never we came can't to find anybody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What's uh, administration? Uh, this is first I've, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody's been talking about it, but I haven't heard about it. So no one's not... talked to me about it. So generally, I wanted to explain for one why you're seeing, why you're seeing it in this format. This is a union position that does have reclassification rights under the union contract. Because it is a vacant position, somebody can't apply for a reclassification. Had they applied for a reclassification, let's say if there was somebody in this position, they applied for a reclassification and it was approved, it still wouldn't take effect until January 1st of 2020, which also doesn't help their situation of having a vacancy that they cannot fill. So that's why the Board of Commissioners is seeing it in this format. Generally, you would see it going through the union steps, and I will tell you that through those steps, this reclassification would have been recommended to be moved forward to the Board of Commissioners. Um, we have a similar position in another department that requires the same educational components, which is one uh, master's degree and one year of experience in a specific field, and it pays higher than the position does at the probate court. So it becomes very difficult to say two positions that have the exact same requirements, one pays higher here than it does over there. They are two different unions, so it is not possible to make them the exact same pay level, but it is possible to bring them closer together. <coughs> Commissioner Bickett. I'm looking at an email from Karen Heinrich at Bay Aranac Behavioral Health that talks about their therapist. I don't know if they're equivalent to what you're looking for. There's limited licensed therapist, 49,056, mm -hmm. and fully licensed, 49 to 59, which looks like about the same, look like what you're the 
Yes. They do the same thing or? Yes, Karen and I work very closely together um, and she was one of the first people that I reached out to to get a little bit of input on what they offer their limited and fully licensed therapists and she provided both of those pay scales for me and they're almost identical to what we're asking to bring up to. So, you know, so just. Are they able to hire staff? with that salary they are and in right. fact we had several individuals who had interest in the position it would have been a step down for them to come over for this position commissioner Lutz so two questions one <coughs> kind of to, to go on Durant. so in 2019 budget you wouldn't need anything yeah correct because you got more than enough Right? Yeah. Okay. And then of the candidates that have already, you've already looked at, two of those have already taken other positions, would you then have to go back out <coughs> and research for this? Yes. Okay. We'd have to repost it at the higher pay level, yes. Right. Okay. And as a side note, I know that uh, Bernie and Kim spoke this already. The second time we posted the position, we highlighted the adjusted the, the job description to highlight all of the benefits and hopes that the lower pay scale, if we highlighted the vacation and the holiday and the health insurance, that people would see that and we would get a, a larger applicant pool and that, that didn't happen. It didn't, it didn't work. Okay. Commissioner Ryder. Uh, my question is for HR. Uh, are we far enough in our wage study to look at that particular classification? And, and compare it to what is asked of us today. No, sorry, I'm not. And, and so the, the concern that I have is, is that when that wage study is completed, if we, it's like opening a door so that there are, there are others working for the county at this time that certainly know what is available in different uh, position you know throughout the state and so their thing is to say you know what it's just not there and, and I, I, I maybe I'll just leave and go to where I can make that uh, amount of money so then are we going to get an influx of employees that come back and say hey I want the same opportunity because I need that or I need that. Are, are we opening the door here I don't think they're opening the door. This is a unique situation as there's nobody in their position. Most of our contracts allow for reclassification procedure through and they would any current employee, and as you know, every year we have an influx of employees that in fact do apply for that. And we go through the process and determine whether they uh, meet the requirements for reclassification based on compensation and company structure. This is a unique situation in that it is a vacant position, so they don't have the opportunity to do that. Um, Employees have every right to apply for reclassification, and, and they do. Uh, but I don't think that this particular situation will change whether they do or don't apply for it. And certainly, people you know, see positions other places. We have people leave, right, to go to, to higher paid positions. It's just part of being the employer, and there's not a ton that we can do about that. But I don't think that this is going to change that influx. I don't think we're going to get 15 more people applying for reclassification based on this solely. Thank you. Go ahead. So you th think that the idea of putting the benefits up by the salary is a good idea or not? I do think it's a good idea. It wasn't necessarily effective in this, in this particular case, but it could be in, in others. Yeah, the ones they want, the people they wanted to offer it to was too late. So. You know, I think we had the same issue when, with the sheriff's department years a couple years ago when you were, couldn't retain anybody in the sheriff's department because our pay was so they just get their training and leave. And we hit that, we've hit that, we've hit that thing again, you know, with a different, a different department, but the same thing. And, then, and that job is so specialized. I mean, people have a master's degree, they, they put their time in, obviously, you know, and it's very specialized in what they do. Uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'd be totally in favor of it, but now let's get down to the bottom of this. We have to have a, so if we make this motion, is the motion going to be to change the the job classification? Is that's all that's all we need to do for this? 
Well, I think the motion would be to change the job classification and any budget adjustments necessary. There shouldn't be a budget adjustment for this year, but at some point in the future of five, six years, there would be a budget required. I so, make that motion. Yeah. Support. Okay. Any more discussion on it? We did it all. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. So, what she said. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Number two, the the B, Polish Legion of American Veterans Post 162, funding for the 2019 biannual convention at Bay Valley Resort and Conference Center. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On the C, the Bay County Fair and Youth Expo proposed improvements at the fairgrounds. So moved. Support. Support. Discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, did you guys, we have, I'm sorry. That's, no, that's, that's the next one. That's the next one. That's yeah. So, okay, so uh, saying that all in favor. Uh, all right. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next one. D, the dec Director of Recreation Facilities of Rental User Agreement with the Bay County Fair Board. Now, that's the paper you have in front of you. Right, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so <laughs> discussion. Commissioner Lutz. Uh, just to go back a little bit on the previous one I'm, I'm very thankful now that we're entering into item d here which is the 15-year contract that we can <laughs> go after these grants that we just approved previous uh and i think it's a great opportunity for bay county fair board to be able to do that now and, and provide those things. we have something from the fair board here right would you like to come up and just say a few words about you know about what you know, especially the last one that we just approved. You know, about you get you folks. You know, going after you know to make some improvements at the fairgrounds. With you know a little bit about your plans for the future of the fairgrounds. You know, and yeah, and we're, uh, I'm Mary Jo. I'm the um, Mary Jo Brandt, the president of the fair board, and um, and we do have an, an excellent board. We um, have been working hard. Um, I say before we were in the hole, and now we're fifty thousand in the bank. So actually, so we're pretty happy that we actually have money in the bank. Um, but we um, recently just had a, a public meeting and um, talked to some community leaders, commissioners, and we were actually at, at a stage where we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. Do we, because uh, we knew that things needed to be improved at the fairgrounds, do we want to do that? Do we want to move to a new fairgrounds? Um, had great conversations and um, was really thankful that we were getting the support to be able to stay longer. Um, at the fairgrounds, um, so not looking at moving because that's huge. Um, so we're actually real thankful that we can actually start working harder on uh, doing that. And um, and of course, this grant there's a minimum you have to have at least a five year lease. So um, anyway, so we are actually looking forward to doing some improvements at the fairgrounds. Um, this new grant that's coming up, um, if we put in twenty thousand. Michigan Department of Ag would match and give us 40. So we can actually do $60,000 worth of improvements. Um, so we're actually looking at doing um, two roofs, the roofs on the livestock barn, the roof on the horse barn. Um, half of the horse barn has new front um, stall fronts. So the other half of the barn, we'd like to do those. And then um, every two years we could apply for this grant. So in two years, then we would look at something else. Um, that we could do for capital improvements. So, uh, so actually, we're very anxious on um, improving everything, keeping them going. So it's, it's a great plan you have. I, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, at least you have a, you have a plan. But Commissioner Durantia, uh, myself and Commissioner Ryder attended uh, their meeting, and we've met with them uh, with Mary Jo since then. And these these folks are really passionate about what they're doing out there. This is a good thing for them, and I think it's a good thing for the county to get an extended lease like this so they can go out and get these improvements to you know, improve our building. So. Commissioner Ryder? As we talked to, again, I think corporate sponsors, you have uh, monitor sugar at this time. Yeah. Is there any other scenario? Yeah. We've had um, various sponsors, like S.E. Johnson. Um, we actually can write a grant to them, and they've given us, <clears throat> like, 2,000 to 5,000 a year. Um, and then basically we do get other sponsorships. Um, Farm, Bay County Farm Bureau has helped out. 
and they've been really great on helping us with paying the youth um, their premiums. Um, so they've they've helped us out with that because there was a point a few years ago where we weren't sure we we're going to be able to pay the youth their premiums after their you know the projects and. Um, at that time, it was Auburn and Speed and Green, and Farm Bureau came through and helped help that. So we've actually been able to continue to do that. Not a lot of fairs continue to provide premiums um, for the youth. Well, we have open too, but um, Michigan Department of Ag canceled that program a few years ago. Um, but we're really happy that we're able to continue that. Um, I mean, the kids don't get rich on it by means, but it's just a nice little thing that. Um, you know, they get their ribbons, then they get their premiums towards those. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you, Mary Jo, and also <clears throat> the board for extending from three years to 15 years your lease. One of the reasons you haven't been eligible, as you know, in the past for grants or corporate sponsorships is you have to have at least a five-year lease. So this should take care of you, and I think the Rental uh, uh, agreement, fifty dollars per year, is pretty reasonable after the first first five thousand yeah. dollar payment. I think we all have great memories of time we spent at the Bay County Fair. We thank you for continuing that tradition and highlighting agriculture and agribusiness, how important it is to our economy and our quality of life. We appreciate you and all the fair board members. We thank the board for working this uh, working this out and making the Bay County Fair Board eligible or what hopefully will be several grants in the future oh, yeah. to make improvements. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. You're Back to uh, D, the rental use agreement. You're all set? That's all I have. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, from the Bay County Sheriff, the 2019 Marine Safety Program. So moved. Discussion. Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, from the Sheriff's Department, the grant application fiscal year 2019 SRP Public Act 416. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No. From the Director of Housing, the HII property and liability insurance renewal for fiscal year 2019. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. From the Depart Director of the Department on Aging, agreement for billboards. So moved. Support. Support. I support. There we go. You, you I'll support. I'm having one of my mental lapses. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> Commissioner Ryder. I've got some questions. And she's got, I think she's got the answer. I know she always does. That's <laughs> the answer. Beth, is, it, is this the second or third time we've done this? And, and the first I thought was a year deal, yep. right? Yep, we, right? we did, um, we, this is our third time going after a billboard. The first one was on Salzburg. Um, the second one was M13 and Wilder Road. And this one is going to be, again, M13 and Wilder Road. And what it's going to do is it's going to help us get participants for our Senior Olympics Games. What I brought with me. Oops. I'll give you a second. For answers. For answers. It's <laughs> an answer sheet. Gotta have a cheat sheet. Well, the unfortunate okay. thing is, he ran out. Too short. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we got more coming that way. So, so um. You got more than two. Yeah. Okay. Her number is right. She just passed the wrong five. I have. I have one. Thanks. I'm sorry. Did I forget? No. Okay. Well, what you got in front of you is uh, it's our home deliver meal count and our congregate meal count um, for 2018. It's January through December. You can see that in May, June, and into July, that was when we were on Salzburg, and you can see the increase in our meals. We, in August, September, and into October, when we were on M13 and Wilder Road, the increase in our meals. So it actually paid off for us to do that. What we're hoping this one will do is give us the increase in our Olympic game participants 
um, for those 55 years and better. Get our name out. We are taking, uh, we actually took the picture, um, Nick took it for us, of some of our participants in their Olympic shirts. And we're going to use that on the billboard and tell them um, when it is and uh, that we look forward to anybody who want to participate. Again, 55 years and older, um, better, excuse me. Uh, May 29th through June 14th. Get my little plug in, so. Thanks, Ryan. Biff, how, how does this compare to our last contract that we had with uh, it's the same company, correct? It's the exact same company. It's a little bit more money because we're doing two, what they call flights. We're doing two flights on both boards. Instead of being one flight on each board, we're doing two. So we're keeping it up a little longer. Um, we're starting in the end of March into uh, um, the middle of May. Our games start again at the end of May. So we're trying to stretch it out and get um, more um, our name back out there and everything uh, just because we're losing participation of those who are you know not homebound this isn't a homebound program this is you know for those active 55 in year and better so and, and you were telling me that we now have an advertisement on our meal vans yes we do yes yes our meal vans actually say Bay County Department on Aging um, serving those 60 years and better and our phone number so that anybody can, you know, driving by, you'll see them. Right now we have three vans that are done. When we get our new three vans coming up soon, we will get it on that and figure out where else we're going to. Uh, we're not going to put it on the older vans, um, but our newer ones, we're going to get them out there. So it's, it looks really, really nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Durantia. Yes. I'd just like to congratulate you on your total meal count up, 30,000 meals. Yes. Yes, from, yes, yes. From last year. Yes, yeah, from 181,000 up to 214. Pass, so. pass along the kudos I will. to your workers. I definitely will. <coughs> hey, as you, as you know, we all. Uh, us all senior citizens here. <laughs> you know, we may we, we may need that the, the meal thing sometime. We don't need it yet, but but uh, it's, it's such a great program, and, and I know you're getting a great absorption rate within the county, and what you and that's what you that's what you're supposed to do, and it's and whatever however you're doing it, and the things you're doing are innovative, and they're obviously working. It's just getting the word back out there, Commissioner Lutz. So, uh, did you see that there was an increase more in one area over another, or is it just been a general in increase? Everything. Um, our CCS team, which is our case coordination and support, our social workers, uh, we went from possibly 40 intakes um, to 85. This in January we had 85. December we had 72. I mean, it just has increased, increased every month. And already in February, what we're a week into it, and we're at 41. I think Jessica said we get anywhere from four to five a day. Of you know, we need help. It's not just um, the home delivered meals. It's not just congregate. It's it's also our. Um, in home services, our homemaking, our light housekeeping, and our um, personal care. You know, so it's it's everywhere. So it's coming in from all different parts of the county as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, especially from the north. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Barsha. Yeah, I just want to uh, also thank you, Beth. <clears throat> I think and the board for creating a department on aging, mm -hmm. as opposed to the division. Joel used to oversee a massive the most massive department in county government. We split it, and I think it's worked out well. Joel's winning awards for the health department and his team, his staff, getting statewide and recognition. And Beth, you're also doing a tremendous job leading the Department on Aging, Thank serving you. all of our elder and retired population. Yes. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. I think we're all set. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Beth. Uh, from 911 director, the revised GIS memorandum of agreement. So moved. Word. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the 2019 assistance to firefighter grant. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. From the health officer, IRFP for forensic pathology services. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Also from the health officer, fiscal year 2018-2019 comprehensive planning, budgeting, and contracting agreement. Yeah. Amendment number one. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries. The mosquito control manager. The tire shredding contract. All right. <laughs> so moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Light trap contractors. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the control materials. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, from the animal control manager, six events to clear the shelter in 2019. So moved. Four. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, payables. General, bayonet, and center ridge arms. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. From the finance officer, budget adjustments. So moved. Support. Discussion. Commissioner Coonan. Uh, looking at the, uh, and it was a bayonet, and uh, the fund balance of 17444 can they just decide what they can do with that money that we were using for uh, the prosecutor and, and uh, uh, sheriff? It's asking to use general fund, I understand fund balance yeah. um, to cover the grant that has ended when we did the budget, we weren't aware of that the bayonet grant was ending. And so it covered a small portion of the prosecuting attorney, um, one of their um, members, and then a bayonet officer. So um, we're asking. Um, oh, I saw that. I yeah. I, I, the way I read it, it said bayonet decided that they were going to take that 17000 and, and use it for somewhere else. No, no. We're at, it, well, yeah. They're, they're not no longer giving us the grant that we were okay. getting from them. And so we have to find additional funds to cover that. Okay. So that's what this is requesting. Okay. Just wanted to know. Because in the original um, budget, again, we had the grant still in there because we didn't get notification until after December that the grant was um, not being renewed. More discussion. Commissioner Krieger. Just to refresh my mind, so the money that we're not going to have was used to fund a position? Part of a position, yes. There's certainly, I don't know, it's of a deputy. Because in, in, in the past, we've always said, and I think we all agreed, that, you know, as long as the grant money was there, the position was going to be taken care of. And then if all of a sudden the grant money was going to disappear for whatever reason, then that position now comes into question. So now we're saying we're not going to follow that logic. We're going to say now that that grant money is gone, we're going to take it from our general fund. We're asking for that because this is a unique situation where the grant isn't funding a part of a position or, or a half-time position or a full-time position. It's part of a position so it's like it's a number of hours that they're charging to these areas so so it is a little unique in that way that the grant you're right it is in jeopardy and that is your decision to make do we want to use the 17,000 of general fund to cover this I'm gonna throw it back if I could to mr. Redmond um, I mean, for as long as I've been here, the logic has always been, as the grant money's there, the position's there. The grant money's gone, then we... The, uh, <coughs> the grant doesn't cover uh, half, of, even half of the deputy. All right. And when we do that, uh, in this case, like a sheriff or a prosecutor, you still have to do it so they would be doing county stuff. Let's say they only went to bayonet that fifty percent of the time. They'd be doing the county stuff the other fifty percent. So, uh, so, so this you makes look it at, different. You know when the grant goes away completely if it's covering full time employees, then that's the case. All right. But when you're coming down you're only 
only uh, pays for a partial position. I'm just looking for a clarification because somebody's going to hear or see that you know our position's always been. Now, our, why are we we doing something different? So I understand the uniqueness of this. I just want everybody to be aware that this isn't somebody that was a full-time position that was being fully grant funded. All right, thank you, Commissioner Lutz. I believe we have a prosecuting attorney here. Right. We could ask her how this would affect that particular position. But that funding wasn't brought forth. She probably wasn't prepared for this question, but she's, she's a prosecuting attorney. She can handle it. Um, I think the amount that is uh, was being given to the prosecutor's office was, I think, around fifty nine hundred dollars. Yes. Thank you. Um, and the individual that does a lot of our drug work. Is, that's not the only thing that he does. Um, he handles sexual assault cases, major felony cases. He'll fill in wherever is needed. So it's not as if this is the only thing that he does. Um, it just isn't. There's way too much work. Um, if he wasn't available, then someone else in the office would pick up. If he's in court and somebody has a question about a drug case, then someone else obviously can handle that. But that is not by far um, the only thing that he does. So he handles um, any other major felonies, um, including anything from armed robberies, sexual assaults, um, financial crimes. Um, so based on that, and I won't speak to exact numbers, uh, $5,900 is not um, even close to half of uh, an assistant prosecutor attorney. Commissioner Cunha. No, I, I, my support taking the money from the general fund, but um, why do we get a reason why they, they stop funding the grant? I mean, uh, how much other money do we get from Bayonet that, or maybe that's all the, 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 the grant money we get from them? That is all that we received from them. And they have Did they give us a reason? No longer funding it. Um, I was told they had a discussion with our under sheriff, but that was all I knew. Oh, I think they lost. Sure. I lost. They yeah. 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 lost another funding source. So, right. Is my understanding. So they. Yeah, it, it's a it's a temporary thing right now. That well, we hope it's a temporary thing. But they they had some costs that they came into, so they went through with um, a meeting about the grants that are coming in because those change for them yearly. So originally they were talking about taking it away, and they did. I think this cycle. Talking to them, they got a new commander that's out there in the district and stuff that they're they're running it different. They're they were breaking off with the teams because that guy was doing a lot. We were looking at it with, with SAG now. We were seeing a lot of the stuff here in Bay. Um, they're they're taking Isabella and Claire because I guess that had a lot of weight on, on the money that was coming in because it was getting too big and too few of guys off the bayonet teams. The state police just put some more people out there and so did Saginaw City, so they're breaking that team off. Where now it's going to be kind of like this was probably 10 or 15 years ago, where their team's going to be focused Bay County and Midland, and that, that's going to be where we're going to have a lot more showing, and they're still going to have the other team running Saginaw, but, but we'll be concentrated. Right now our guys and, and them have been running a huge area with Isabella, Claire, Saginaw, and then... Uh, <coughs> That I think is their other one. So they've streamed it back. They, they've had some structural things. They just got some new grants that came in through Bayonet. So talking with their new guy, he just kind of said, if we can put our seatbelt on, was the way we kind of worded it for a little bit. They can't predict the future. Marijuana forfeiture has changed a little, but a lot of the other forfeitures haven't. I mean, not with heroin and everything else, they're, they're still getting more. And, and from what we're hearing from them, because they're not 100% sure, this should get back to like what it used to be where we were actually seeing a lot more forfeitures here. So it's just one of those things that they're saying, you know, if you can kind of bear with us a little bit and watch this, there's a good chance it's gonna come back where it ends up being a lot better than, than like, like we had it like 15 years ago when they were on Bayonet here. Commissioner Krieger. So Sheriff, that's one thing that I wanted to touch on because I know there was a time where Bay County was getting their fair share of the monies that were coming in. And then for whatever reason, that all kind of dried up. I don't know if it was political or whatever, but I, I certainly know that you're going to be watching yep. their actions. And if, if we're due 
we're going to get what we're supposed to be getting. Yeah, and there would be other options to put those guys. They, they just went through, I think, like everybody else, a little bit of the financial struggle and some, some things went on. A big chunk of where they were getting funded, with what happened was from tribal, and tribal stopped funding part of this for a while. They just now are starting to fund it back, it sounds like. And so what they said is there's nowhere else to take. So the board had taken a vote on the, I, I think for the burn money or whatever, the grant part that was coming in, they said, hey, for a little bit, just to get through this, you know, can we get the burn grant back? Where, where the grant still came in, it just stayed like in-house with Bayonet instead, where before it would come out and we were doing the, the prosecutor's office, ours with some equipment or whatever. They just fell on tight times too, and so their board came together and just kind of said, hey, let's, you know, we got to get through this. So I'd like Stock to talk to their new guy. I think it's going to be way better for them. Well, and I like the fact that you're saying <laughs> now they're going to have specific. Um, Back in Bay Middle. Exactly. Yes, sir. Thank you. Everybody all set? Okay, we got a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, so we need a motion to receive the analysis of the general fund equity. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, motion to receive Executive Director 2007-11. So moved. Support. Discussions. Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, security monitoring renewal. So moved. Support. Discussion. Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Perfect. Any referrals? Unfinished business. New business. Closed session. No need for closed sessions. Perfect. Miscellaneous. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Thank you. Um, you probably saw an email go around about oh two weeks ago before we had our, our polar vortex talking about ice conditions on the Saginaw Bay. If you recall, we had Chuck Broya, who's a resident out at Applin Beach, yeah. that's had concerns, and we've had some uh, major uh, catastrophes on, on the river, let's say, by the hot ponds where people have right. lost their lives. And there, are, there is some signage that's out there. And right now, we've had the warm temperatures, and uh, people have been just itching to get out on the bay to, to go fishing. So I'm just passing on a concern that Chuck still has on the safety of ice. You want to make sure if you're going out, people know where you're going and what time you're coming back in. You need to make sure that you've got the proper equipment so if you should have a situation where you're going through the ice, you can get yourself back up. Um, the, the ice is always dangerous. Never consider it safe. And I just, for us that are out in the community and you come in contact with people who are ice fishermen, just remind them to be safe and hopefully they have a cell phone that they can keep dry. My suggestion would be keep your cell phone in a baggie so that if you do have a, a situation and you're in the water, it's not getting wet, so you can call for help. So just Mr. passing that information on. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Lutz. Yeah, also on the, the local news, the Coast Guard is cautioning people going out on the bay and on the rivers again because of the rains and the, the warm weather that has come about. And we're only going down tonight. We're supposed to have a, another storm tonight, but then it's going back up into the 30, high 30s again. And that's just going to make the ice even that much worse. So, yes, so we, we got to caution everybody that we know that wants to go out on the ice. Don't. Yeah, I received the information from, from Chuck. He's, very, he's, he's a very good steward of our, of our bay, too, just like you guys are on the beach. You know, he does, he's, oh, yeah. he's big on about the ice and, and about that hot pond, and, and we can only thank him for his diligence, I guess. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, any other miscellaneous? Nope. Oh, yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know, if you recall, late last year we applied for a, um, uh, a grant after the Department of Veterans Affairs Department was established, and we, the grant was supposed to be, it was a $25,000 grant. And I got the award letter yesterday from the state, and there was a uh, a match of twenty five thousand dollars, along with a distribution of um, funds that was budgeted or was budgeted for uh, various counties or all the counties. Not all the counties submitted for these grants, so those funds were distributed among those counties that did apply. 
So as a result, uh, our award letter was for $76,000 for the Department of Veterans Affairs. So I just wanted that's to let awesome. everyone wow. know that, that's, uh, great. That we, that that's what we got yesterday. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Good news. Good news. The veterans are like uh, that was announced. Was that announcements? Sir. Yes, sir. No, I just wanted to. I was hoping Mr. Bishop would stay a little longer because <clears throat> I wanted to react to what he said. And, you know, we had a, a good discussion. Apparently, there's one or two city commissioners who, you know, have implied to Mr. Bishop and other residents of the city, property owners, that Bay County has no interest in the Independence Bridge or Liberty Bridge issues. And as you know, we all do. They're critical infrastructure that we all use and depend on. But I think there's a perception out there that, you know, maybe the county could write a 25, 50, $100 million check to finance one or both of the bridges. And I just want to clarify, as you know, as I mentioned to Mr. Bishop, you as the County Board of Commissioners of Bay County will have to vote on a toll bridge if the city opts to go that way. Also, you are the only governmental entity that can put a countywide millage on to support the infrastructure in the city that the city owns. We've met numerous times, <clears throat> Corporation Council, myself, and several of the commissioners have met with the city, and I think they're getting toward making a decision. My personal views, just to share with you and what I shared with Mr. Bishop, is that, you know, before they make that decision, I hope they consider any infrastructure package that may pass the federal level or at the state level. As we know, Governor Whitmer campaigned on one of her pledges, if she can get support, either through a bond proposal approved by the voters statewide or by the legislature, to uh, invest in our roads and bridges to the tune of about $2.7 to $3 billion per year for the next 10, 15 years. So uh, also, President Trump will be giving his State of the Union address tonight. I expect him to touch on infrastructure and what the federal government may do. So my personal view is, you know, if I was a city leader, I would <clears throat> you know, probably want to know if there's going to be money available from the federal or state levels rather than assuming all of the tax burden on Bay County or Bay City taxpayers. So the options are limited. I think there's three. And so I've tried to explain that to Mr. Bishop. Amber helped in, in sort of sharing with him that the city has to make a decision on which they want to go, which way they want to go. I don't think it's our position that we want to tell them what to do with the bridges. They have to decide that and then Whatever way we can cooperate, hopefully we will. We know they're critical infrastructure, and several of you represent parts of Bay City, and it's not just city issue. There are a lot of county residents that in Bangor and south, southern end of Bay County that use both bridges regularly. So I know he left a little early, but I'll catch up with him. I have his phone number. But explain to him again that hopefully he didn't leave with the impression that, that we, the county, Bay County can write a huge check to the city to finance bridges. As you know, you're very familiar with the fiscal condition the county's in. So, been very frugal and doing our best, but, uh, you know, for me, all of the city residents are also my constituents. So I care just as much about, about this challenge they face as, uh, as anyone. Uh, so, yeah. This question so, for Just to add, you know, Mr. You Spencer is, is one of the few active residents that are passionate about the community. And as you can see, he's, he's, he's opinionated and, and uh, I think that runs in the Spencer blood. Yeah. So I'm glad that he's the way he is. Yeah, yeah he has a passion for the community yep. uh, challenges. And hopefully he'll be back in the future. He won't, he won't think, he leave with the impression that we're going to do, you know, assume the, the yep. burden of financing the bridges. We can, we can maybe play a role somehow in trying to enlist federal and state support or putting something on the ballot. But beyond that, I don't think we're in a financial condition to be writing large checks to, to finance any bridges. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn is always in order. Support me. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.